So these are the immediate complications which you know that these are the causes. So if you avoid the causes, you could stop them or you could identify them, you could prevent them in a good number of patients. If you have been successful in avoiding these problems and have ventilated the patient, there are some short term complications like mechanical complications, like local complications, systemic complications and drug related problems. So what are the mechanical and local complications which can happen? So once a patient is intubated, he is under your control and your nursing staff should be actually be focusing on providing good dental hygiene and oral hygiene to these patients. So if that gets neglected in the heat of the battle, yes, the patient is hypoxemic. Yes, the patient has ARDS. He has hypotension. He has got kidney injury. You need to put him on dialysis. Yes, they are all priorities, but the general housekeeping care of the patient should not suffer. So you, you brush your teeth every day, twice a day. So that should not stop even in the intensive care unit. So oral hygiene is important from several points of view. One, a poorly maintained oral cavity is a precursor for subsequent infections in the lung. It's a subsequent precursor for nosocomial sinusitis, which we will discuss shortly. And it is a precursor for colonization with multi-drug resistant gram-negative bugs, which can be a catastrophe in an intensive care unit. If you have fixed your endotracheal tube and secured it with uh, tube fasteners or ties, uh, and you don't move the tube uh, from one angle of the mouth to the other, the angle of the mouth on which the tube has been rested for a long period of time becomes ulcerated. Uh, the skin around it could get ulcerated and that's again a portal of entry for gram negative bugs and uh, fungi. So in the intensive care unit. So you should be careful, you should be attentive. Uh, when you actually get rid of a patient from the ventilator support, he should look exactly the way he was when he got intubated no additional scars should be visible. That's the quality, that's the reflection of quality of intensive care which you give to the patient. And if you don't pay proper attention to fixing the tubes, changing the tube position, or where your actual uh, suction cannula is actually going when you're putting it into the mouth for suction, you could end up injuring the tongue of the patient. So these are all mechanical and local complications which can happen. But the most important mechanical complicate uh, the local complication that happens because of mechanical ventilation is uh, sinusitis that's usually caused not by the endotracheal tube by the nasogastric tube which you insert in majority of these patients who get intubated and the reason why um, this is important is the fact that nearly 90 percent of the patients who have a nasogastric tube for longer than 72 hours will have some form of maxillary sinusitis and as you leave the tube in place longer the chances of this sinus infection trickling backwards uh, as a post nasal drip and seeding the lungs with a resistant bug is very high so nosocomial sinusitis is an independent predictor of the prevalence of ventilator associated pneumonia so the trick is to put an orogastric tube in patients rather than use a nasogastric tube if the duration of anticipated ventilation is more than 72 hours. If you are looking at an ARDS patient, whether it's COVID or it's non-COVID patient, you are looking at ventilating them for at least seven to nine days. And in COVID, it seems to be that they will stay on the vent for two weeks. So it may be prudent, it may be probably pertinent to think about putting them on ventilator support uh, uh, with the idea that they will be there for 14 days or 21 days or more than that. So try to put an orogastric tube as soon as you intubate these patients rather than go by the default route of nasogastric intubation. 